All right, guys, welcome. I'm glad that you're here. If you're someone who is seeking uncommon results, this podcast is for you. Success, happiness, and wisdom. What do these words mean to you? I think we can all agree that we'll probably all have slightly different definitions of each. In these podcasts, I get to dive deeply into conversations with some amazing innovators, influencers, and trendsetters that have had different versions of how they define the terms, yet have come out on the other side with amazing, uncommon results. At some point in their lives, they have decided to unshackle themselves from the norm and go beyond all boundaries. All right, everybody. Well, thanks again for uh, tuning into the show, the Beyond All Boundaries show with uh, John Dwyer. I'm your host, and I got a good friend and a great guest, uh, Frank Chen, on the show. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. Excited to be here. <laughs> so Frank is in a, uh, an affiliate, and I think, you know, I'm really excited to have you on because I really feel like, I mean, I want to learn more about what you do, and it sounds really just a lot of cool things that you have going on, but, but Frank's company is the affiliateincubator.com. Um, he's been in the industry for 10 years. But, yep, yeah, about 12, but 10, oh, 10 12, is good okay. too. Yeah, 12 years. Okay, well, you know, we'll, <laughs> we'll, 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 go on, we'll go on half, right? <laughs> what, what, what's interesting though is that, you know, in, in that 10 to 12 years, you've um, over $20 million of, of products sold with people that you're working with in yeah. revenue. Um, so, I mean, this is, to me, that's that's some big, big capital coming through and the things that you're doing. So why don't you um, just give a little bit of highlight of who you are and, and Talk a little bit about the affiliates and, and what you do. Absolutely. First of all, thanks for having me, John. I think uh, what you do here is awesome. And I hope I can create some massive value for your listeners. Um, first and foremost, guys, what I do is affiliate management. And for many of you guys, the best way to kind of explain that uh, from a layman's perspective is, you know, YouTube. You got If you watch YouTube, if you watch streamers, you watch Twitch, you watch influencers, anytime they talk about their products, or they're getting endorsements, they're getting affiliate commissions on everything that they sell, right? Yes, it's an endorsement, but every product they sell or they get behind or they um, talk about like, hey, go to the link below and you'll always see kind of like an Amazon link that takes you to a page. Because if you buy through that link, they get money for that. Now, this applies to all types of products online. It doesn't matter if you're in fitness, you're in health, you're in finance, you're in crypto, you're in real estate. If there's anybody out there that you're following that's selling a book, a coaching, a class, um, anything online, there's ways to get integrated with those companies and become affiliate uh, affiliates of those businesses. And basically, you you are their advertiser and you sell and you sell their products and you make a commission on what you sell them. Now, those out there who create blogs and are really, really, really good at uh, growing community and uh, having yeah having community, then this is the perfect platform for you to start doing affiliate work and selling products to your community. So that's essentially what I do for a living and specifically in the real estate space is I connect with real estate experts who have community and products and help connect those products to other communities. So if it's a wholesaler working with a fix and flipper, well, they're doing different things, but these audiences can both mutually benefit from each other's information. So if I can create the relationship there and it's mutually beneficial and both teams can make money, that's how I make money. So that's a, it's kind of like the rough idea of affiliate management. So how did you, um, and, and I know you mentioned real estate, but even before our podcast, I mean, it, it, yeah. and you mentioned it too, it's, it's not just, you don't work just in the real estate space. I mean, you're working and connecting with all different types of products and, and influencers and things like that as well. Absolutely. And that's kind of the plan for myself this year. The last 10 years have really just been kind of cultivating the skill set. And that's one of the cool things I would love to talk to your audience about is kind of my background. Most people are like, oh, do you have a master's or like a, any sales experience? Did you do door to door? It's like I had a hodgepodge of skill sets. Uh, I graduated from the University of Texas with a nutrition degree. Uh, very quickly, I realized you don't make very much money as a nutritionist if you're out there listening. I commend you. It's it's a great job, but it just wasn't something I made very much money doing. Um, so right out of college, I was looking on uh, Craigslist for a job like many of us did back in the 08, 09. And I stumbled across an ad, found a guy who was like looking for someone to get paid $15, $20 an hour. I got started. And the funniest story is this guy wanted to fly me out to Newport Beach after one week of just hiring me. I met this guy at a Starbucks I was living in Austin at the time, and I'm at a Starbucks and Round Rock. And at the time, I was like, okay, this guy going to take me to California and like take my kidneys, or is he going to like leave me there? You know, I, I never knew this industry. I was a very traditional worker. I worked at a, I was a yeah. server, all these other things. I worked at the Gap and folded jeans. So this is my first experience working for an online business from home. 
Uh, long story short, uh, we did a background check, everything checked out. I went there, I really got immersed in the business, which is information marketing, and really just did a crash course in that and was really learning for probably three or four years, this brand new skill set. So my, you know, my thing for you guys out there is regardless of what you graduate, even if you didn't go to college, um, 100%, I got to where I am today through just hard freaking work, learning and hard freaking work. I had zero experience before. So I was just absorbing as much as I can uh, before I got to the place that I am now. So, you know, you, you graduate with a nutrition degree. What was, what was it? Did you always have like this entrepreneurial mindset or was it like, I mean, I know you kind of just, you know, we're doing the things that wasn't working, but tell me about, you know, the idea of you just wanting to do your own thing at some point in time that it just. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I grew up in a home that was very entrepreneurial centered. My mom was in sold insurance, sold real estate as an agent. Uh, and, and then she ended up just becoming an investor herself. So that was pretty much my fundamentals as a child growing up. I was fixing up property, looking at real estate at the age of 13 and 14, right? They took me to everything. This is their core business. Um, growing it from the ground up. So we had long days, long hours. I would be working, you know, go to high school in the, like, in the day and then go fix up property at night. So this was kind of just ingrained in me at a very young age uh, to where traditional kind of eight to five, having a boss was really just not on my radar. It actually was just the most discouraging thing to think about when I graduated college. It's like, dang, I got to find a job. Because I did some summer internships and did all that stuff for free. And I was like, I just can't work eight to five. That is just terrible. Um, so I, I actually ended up hitting a crossroad because I was only making, you know, full transparency, I was making like probably 40, $45,000 doing this gig for the first few years of my life. Definitely was living paycheck to paycheck. Um, and I knew if I went back to get my master's degree or if I wanted to pick up any other type of jobs, my income cap would already be around 75 to 85,000 with my experience. I was like, if I just do this better, I could make the same. So I just went real deep, went all in and, uh, ended up tripling, quadrupling, and now I'm doing well over six figures. But uh, this all came from understanding like the eight to five would have never got me there. So entrepreneurship is the only way to really scale your income on an exponential level that's directly correlated with your efforts. Would you agree? Totally agree. And I, and I, I mean, that what, what you just said is awesome, right? Correlated with your efforts. And I think a lot of times people, you know, they just think they're going to just not put in the effort or things are just supposed to happen. Right. And it's a grind. Like what you said, you know, it, it's hard freaking work and it is. And I don't think that people realize or recognize the, the, and some do right for sure. But it's, I always talk about, and I, I mentioned almost on every podcast that I just, I just, I'm such a believer of it that there's just no shortcut to greatness and it's just, you know, the grind and the effort and um, you know, falling down and, and really looking at failure. It's really easy to talk about, um, you know, failures. Oh, I learned from my failures, but man, when you're going through that, it, it, it's tough. Right. And to, to, to have the effort to get through that is really challenging. So Frank, as you started your business, you know, you, you went out to California, what were some of the trials and, and, uh, tough times that you experienced? And was there ever moments of like, you know what, this is just, this sucks. I got to quit or do something different. Absolutely. You know, as you go through life, you know, income and money always is at the forefront of all of our minds, right? We have to make money in order to live comfortably. And I know that definition is different for everybody out there. Um, but most importantly, it's like, for me, the most difficult thing was to mot to be self-motivating. I know sometimes you like, when you apply for a new job, you're just like self-motivated, you got to, you know, self-paced, no one's going to push you. And I think that applies to a lot of things in life. And for me, that was my biggest challenge coming out, coming out of college, making some money, working from home. No one's pushing me. Don't have a really a manager. Uh, it was just finding certain, like one of the biggest things I learned was uh, dressing up for the role. Like when you work from home and if I probably just this last year, or, you know, if you're dealing with COVID stuff, your first experience ever working from home, you probably woke up from bed, wore your pajamas and went, and went to work, right? And maybe changed your shirt for some Zooms. Uh, but it's really weird how the psychology works. You know, I was really working at a very sluggish pace when I was wearing my pajamas or not changed for the role. When I started changing what I wore and were and dressed up for work, even though I was just walking about 30 seconds to my office, it completely transformed how I approached my business. So that was like my biggest learning lesson coming out is if I really wanted to become a, uh, an entrepreneur and being taken seriously and I own my own business, I had to treat it like that, right? So I had to like dress up. I had to take my meetings seriously. I had to start purchasing softwares and start acting and treating this like a real business. 
So that was probably my biggest, you know, shifting point um, coming out of this right at the gate. You know, talk about this too, because you, you made a comment in regards to, you know, buying software. I think it's really, really important to invest in yourself and your business, right? I mean, and, and it's a balance because as you like what, as you're trying to grow your business, you need money. You want to live on the money, right? And so many times, I mean, I see it a lot of times to where, you know, people might be making seven figures, but they're spending seven figures on lifestyle, not necessarily reinvesting and, and growing and investing in themselves to become even better and better and better. So over the, over the last 10 years, you know, I mean, we're in a mastermind together, right? And right. that's, that's an investment in, in building our, you know, our talents and our skill set. Um, so talk a little bit about, you know, just what you have felt to be, you know, really good investments to you and your business over the years. It's a great question, John. And absolutely, man. Um, one thing is too, is, you know, to plug John, you know, John is going to be an investment for me. I'm in that phase of my life now where I really need to get things better in my life financially. Uh, things are good, but I'm talking about uh, what is it called? Financial legacy or your legacy wealth, right? Mm -hmm. Not just my wealth, but my kids and their kids and their kids. So investing in that is very important. Uh, last year alone, I spent roughly about 30 grand traveling for events, about 23 grand on my education in terms of masterminds, continued education. This is something that I never could have fathomed when right. I wasn't making, you know, when I was making 40 grand, I was like, I can't afford to spend 30 if I'm only making 45. That is, I literally doubled my income last year because of the mastermind that I joined. So it's about holding yourself accountable. And again, I think people will always tell you the best investment is yourself, right? You are your best asset. You, you've been, you've been yeah. kind of harping that with me. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, let, I'm really letting that resonate because that is so true. We spend so much money on things that don't really create value back in our life or even there's no real ROI there. Mm -hmm. But I even think if I benefit uh, through mental or emotional and not through a monetary gain, I still believe that's an invaluable investment. No yep. matter what that cost, does that make sense? Oh, and sometimes even the mental or the emotional <clears throat> gain, or even the relationship, um, may not seem like a monetary gain now, but man, it can really, uh, it, it will catch up, right? And oh, I talk yeah. a lot about currency following value, and and when we invest in ourselves and we um, surround ourselves with people that will, you know, can be vulnerable around, and and they can challenge challenge you, right? And say, hey, you know, look you're doing this, but what if you were to do this? And, and maybe being uncomfortable sucks, yeah. right? But it's what, it, it really what grows you as not only a business owner, but as a human, you know? And just to, and I think for me, um, you know, and just getting to know you, Frank, I mean, I mean, you're, you're down to earth, awesome dude, right? Like, it's not about, it's not about Thanks, you. Man. you. You always want to know, but it's true. Like, I'm not, I'm not blowing smoke, right? It's true. It's like you're, you're just trying to provide value and you have real intentions and it's, it's, it's just to provide value and, and how you can be a resource for people. So, um, and that's just who you are, man. And, and it's probably because of all the investments and the things that you've done to, to grow personally and professionally and, and all these things. You made actually a really, really good point there. And I think that's what you attracted me to you at, at first. And, and I think this is some of the best advice I can give you guys out there. And I've seen two sides of this and let me, let me clarify. So when, when you're attracting business, no matter if you guys are in real estate, you're an agent or, or you're an insurance or, or it doesn't matter where, if you're in the business of attracting business, the best way to do that is to create and provide value first, lead with value. Um, I've attended events before where someone's really trying to just sell their, their service. They're like, oh, what is it that you do? Oh, did you know this is what I do? And then immediately start pitching me. And it's like, yo, I don't even know you, um, let alone have a relate. No like and trust, right? Is really the, the three things that you need in order to have a solid relationship. So um, how I've been able to survive all these years and really unscathe in terms of my reputation is just by always leading with value, okay? So if anybody asks me for advice, I don't ask them to pay for it or anything. I just give it to them. And it's literally about planting a whole bunch of seeds. And over time, this is what we call biz dev, right? Two, three, four months later, these people all will come back, right? It's in the follow-up, but they know like, oh man, Frank created so much value to me that one conversation we had. Now my business is ready to actually take that step and move forward with Frank, I'm going to hit him up, right? Because I didn't really sound icky to them. I, didn't, I wasn't there to just sound like a sleazy salesperson. It's lead with value. So that's, that's, that's some advice I can give y'all. That's true. And, and, and to your point, so Frank, let's talk a little bit about the affiliate, the affiliation world. And because and, your job is really to connect people, right? If I'm understanding that correctly, true, true. Absolutely. Yeah. So 
one of the things I've been really learning over the last two weeks is I've, I've been kind of the affiliate incubator is really a training incubator for anybody who's interested in doing this for a, a living, right? Like it doesn't matter if you're fresh out of high school, you're fresh out of college, you know, if you're online and you understand kind of how e-commerce works, then affiliate marketing is right up your alley. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. What was the question again? <laughs> I, I love no, it. no, no. Continue, continue on that path because I want you to explain it in, in detail. You know what you're doing and and how how the yeah. affiliation world works because I I I trying to grasp my arms around it right. Even just with the conversations that you and I have had and then just talking with some other friends, it, it's quite fascinating. I believe. I mean. Okay. So on the most basic level, guys, you know, if there's anything that you love or you're interested in now, there's pretty much nothing stopping you from becoming an affiliate of that product, right? Um, and what I mean by that is if you like, say, digital cameras, that you're into photography and you buy a lot of certain type of equipment, then you can essentially reach out to that brand and be like, hey, I spent a lot of money and I love your brand. I'm an ambassador of this brand and I have people who follow me in this they will give you an affiliate link to sell this product and you can make 10%, 15% on anything you sell. That is better than you just talking about it and people buying it and you getting nothing. So I start implanting that thought process in all aspects of your life, right? Because we're consumers that by nature, we buy things all the time. Mm -hmm. So my thought is if I could integrate myself in ways to at least like alleviate some of that cost, meaning if I spend a hundred bucks, but if I can refer three or four people to buy it and I reduce my cost by... 50% by making these three referrals, would you do that, right? That's the whole idea of referral programs. Oh, refer five people, get your subscription for free. That's the whole model, right? Um, MLM is kind of similar to affiliate marketing too. Some people are like, oh, MLM is kind of sneaky and all that stuff. Depends on how you look at it. But MLM is essentially affiliate marketing, right? I acquire new, a downline of people. They, they acquire a downline. I get a percentage of their downline. That's exactly how affiliate marketing. There's first tier, there's second tier, based on the relationships that you have. Uh, I don't want to go into those details because not as important. But I think you know, I'm really into gaming. Uh, people don't know that much about me, so I watch Twitch, and everything about Twitch is affiliated, right? All the so all the hardware they use, their components, their uh, their microphones, their 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 keyboards. Like this keyboard here is pretty cool. Bought that all from a link. And that guy got credit for it. So this is all around us. And I believe this is going to be a huge opportunity for people um, in the future. All YouTube people, all Facebook people, any social media aspect is going to have affiliate marketing heavily ingrained, um, I believe, in the near, near future. So is it, is it, is, is it challenging to connect and find all the, because, I mean, you're really kind of connecting people, yep. right, that are trying to sell a product or doing things with somebody that's already buying a product. Right. And you're you're basically the connector. Is it, how do you how do you manage and um, not manage, but just how do you find all these connections and, and and resources to connect people to? That's a great question. I think this to, to oversimplified, I would say, is to be the willingness to have conversations and asking the right questions. Right. Um, I love learning about new businesses. Maybe that's my superpower, I would say. But I think that helps a lot in just being curious. Um, for instance, what you do for a living, I would ask you a ton of questions about what you do. And then hopefully that can segue into, okay, how do you make money? How do the businesses that you represent make money? By understanding that process, I can start having other conversations with people in your industry and figure out how they might make money. And then I figure out, okay, are there synergies between these two companies? Are there things that John is doing that this company isn't doing? And can I make an introduction here? Mm -hmm. Right? So um, I guess the big, I'm trying to give you a very, like a, like a simple example, meaning, okay, best example is I'm an ice cream maker. I make delicious ice cream, right? That's my focus. Uh, and that's all I do. But there's another company out there that makes really cool, unique cones, right? Mm -hmm. And I make the best waffle cones. These are the best, <laughs> uh, right? This, just, together, they are great. But as a company, it's like, I can't do, you know, the, you know, in terms of cost of goods and things like that, I don't want to go into the ice cream business because I'm in the waffle cone business, right? Right. But everybody here who buys waffle cones wants to buy ice cream too, right? So if I was a waffle company, I'd be like, hey, I actually am an affiliate of this delicious ice cream brand that I love. I eat it all the time with my cones, blah, 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 blah. If you like it, I actually have a special code for 10% off. Sound familiar? If you use code waffle, you'll get 10% off. Every 10% is what they make essentially, right? They're making a percentage of everything that they sell. So ideally, um, when you have 
more of these conversations, uh, if you look to connect people who aren't doing what others are doing within their industry, there's 100% opportunity there for you to make money. So how does so so how do you, for example, I'm just thinking of um, like Dr. Axe, right? Because my wife's really into health and, and all that. And Dr. Axe, you know, I mean, he's, he's, he's got certain products. Mm -hmm. And so how does how do these companies or how does he is it because he has such a big following that they're going to want him on his brand and then they'll, then he gets a percentage of sales or how do you how do you even get in that position of Dr. Axe is it because you have to develop and build up your own following and then you do that first or is that typically how that works? Tell me a little bit more about this Dr. Axe guy. Well, he's a <clears throat> he's a, he's really into health and wellness. Okay. And he's he's got certain products that he sells and because he's really knowledgeable, right, mm -hmm. in in the health and wellness space. And so like protein powders and just more natural um, health versus um, medical. I'm going to pause there. Color cut this. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how. So we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. No, my question for you would be, does he have product? Like, Are these his supplements or is he selling other people's supplements? Well, that's what I don't know. Okay. Well, so that's a great question. Okay. So, so I'll rephrase that question. And then, so, so what, what, should, what questions should I ask Frank? No, that's okay. It'd be like, oh, this guy has a product. So didn't, I don't know if he's selling his own or not. So that I, we can just dive into that. Right. And I would just okay. ask you questions and follow okay. up and kind of break it down. This is kind of right. the, exercise, this is kind of the exercise of the question, me asking you questions. So yeah, right. Okay. This, yeah. this will be good. Okay. So how do you know if someone's like got their own products that are selling somebody else's products? That's a great question. So it, it, it can get kind of a little complicated sometimes. In our industry, we have things called that are like white labels, right? White labeling basically is a person who owns the product and they sell the licensing for this product. So other people who buy the license can essentially brand this product as if it was theirs, okay? So if this guy, Dr. Axe, has this product that has his face on it or it's under his brand, my first question is, is this actually your product or is this like a product of someone as an affiliated product? That's what I would ask them. Mm -hmm. Now, if it is his product, then the best kind of connection here would be, well, if I'm a fitness guru, like I'm all about CrossFit or I'm, you know, just jacked, right? I'm super in shape, but I only know about my own personal nutrition. I don't really know a lot about supplements and things like that, but I have a huge following of people who trust me because I'm in shape and I work out and I give good advice. Then I would talk reach out to Dr. Axe, be like, hey man, I follow you. I love your supplements. I take them myself. Is there any way that I could maybe bring your product to my community and say, hey, this is what I take and you give me a little cut on whatever I sell. That's kind of how that would work, right? So if your wife is really into that and she's into fitness and maybe she has a blog, then I would read, I would, that's how I'd create an affiliate relationship is reaching out to him and selling his products through my website or my blog. Wow, okay. So then you can go different directions with it then. Absolutely. It's it. Because my idea is if you own a product, obviously you're going to have advertising costs and marketing costs, hard costs, right? And you have time and effort that you have to spend out there to generate brand awareness. And I always tell my clients this. I was like, your biggest cheerleader is the people who are going to sell your stuff. I almost called it crap, but your stuff. <laughs> you know I mean? It's not crap. It depends on what it is. There's tons of crap out there. But when you sell, um, when you're selling stuff, uh, man, I lost my trade of stop, thoughts there. That was pretty... <laughs> That was pretty funny. Uh, what was I saying there? That that really threw me off. Wait, when you sell when you sell your stuff, when you're selling, let me pause here. We'll pause here and come back. That was a funny moment. Uh, what was I saying? You were, uh, you were you were talking about when you sell your stuff and you got you're gonna say crap and then you <laughs> went out. Oh, okay, my bad. Okay, yeah, let me just come back. Let's talk. When you're selling your stuff. Uh, we'll have that edited out, please. Um, when you're selling your stuff, it doesn't matter like, okay, well, let me get my, my mindset. Okay, okay, so pa pause for a minute so they can, they can edit it. Okay. Okay. So when you're selling your stuff, right, obviously your own efforts is separate from your customer's efforts. And those are really your biggest cheerleaders. And, like, and that's what I tell my clients is rather than focusing all your ad spend or marketing dollars, how about we really build a community around our, our, our buyers, our consumers, people who are always using our product, right? Equip them with the ability to talk to their friends about it and sell their product and maybe make some money and participate in the, in the revenue side of things. 
right? Because if I ever had a great experience with you, John, and you, you know, helped me save a ton of money or really did some really cool stuff with my finances, do you believe I'm going to go out there and tell people about it? I would hope so. Did you ask me to do this? No. And if I brought you one, two, three, four people throughout the year, is that you make money from that? Yeah. Is it free? Absolutely. Right. So yeah, that's how I grew my business. Word of mouth is what people say. Right. Yeah. And that's absolutely what I believe when like, if you're an agent or again, I always use real estate like uh, references because that's where I'm in every day, but regardless of where your business is really, you know, focus on your customer experience, really start focusing on your customers because they're the ultimately ones who are really generating a lot of sales for you that you don't even, you can't really calculate essentially, right? With mm -hmm. ads and things like that, there's direct ROI, ROAS, we're trying to add spend and things like that to really kind of cross reference. But word of mouth sales is, you know, there's people who say, oh, my entire business is word of mouth. And you have to like, well, how do you, like, how do you calculate that? Well, as long as every person you know refers two people to me, it's, no one ever knows your real numbers, right? It's just it's all word of mouth because I don't really have advertising costs. Yeah. So really focus on that. I, I think that's there's a lot of opportunity there. So is it you know you mentioned white labeling? Is is it similar or is there a difference between the two? Uh, ask me that again. So I heard you mention white labeling, mm -hmm. right? So is affiliate different than white label, or is it pretty much in essence similar? Or the same? That's a great question. I feel like there's a there's a bit of a gray area there. I think they're very similar um, because white labeling is essentially giving an individual the opportunity to become an affiliate of for other people, right? One by white labeling, you're essentially buying a I don't want to use the word franchise, but you're buying a business in a box. Then you're essentially selling it in order, and now you're in business and you're selling it as an affiliate, uh, or I'm sorry, you're going to be attracting people to sell your business uh, and they're going to be your affiliates. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. You are the product. I don't think you're necessarily an affiliate of this brand when you buy the licensing of it. You're now a business owner of this product. Okay, so in light label, you actually buying a, you're buying part of that product. Right, you're essentially like, I could be like, uh, say I have a trip, like a skip tracing software and I white label it as Frank Chin skip tracing. I could sell to John and now it's John Dwyer skip tracing with his face on it, his color, his brand, his whole entire feel, but it's my software that's doing all the work. No one knows it's mine, right? Mm -hmm. Unless they use mine. Now they're using John's like, hey, this looks oddly familiar. It's like, oh yeah, John right. owns the white label of it. And then you get a percentage of whatever I sell. Correct. Oh no, I don't. You are the, you paid me the licensing fee. So now you own the brand, you own your own brand to where you can oh. do your own pricing structure. You could have affiliates sell. And every time they get someone to use your software, you start making a percentage of that. Right. For me, if I'm in the white labeling business, I'm in the, I'm in the licensing business. I want to make money off the sale of it. Some of them do integrate some kind of ongoing continuity model where every percentage you make, I make a small percentage of that. Uh, it does depend on that though. Okay. So interesting. So um, <clears throat> people that are in the white labeling space and they're, they're building or trying to create more and more like licensing agreements or more software and things like that. It's kind of like a franchise model, right? Yeah. Like just, I'll take a little percentage of all your, of, of your business. You make the lion's share, but they like the initial upfront capital. It, it can cost depending on what the software is or like 10, 20, 30, 50 grand just for the licensing. Now, is that something that you connect with as well? Uh, yes. For instance, if you have a product um, that you're looking to uh, white label with customers, I will connect you with those customers. People who are in that field who don't necessarily have a software and need it, but are in business. Mm -hmm. Those are the risks I look for. And again, it comes back to having those conversations, right? Knowing right. what your product is, knowing what the needs are of one individual and searching for the other individual who can either benefit from it or find it. Um, yeah, that can benefit from it. I, this is just, it's really interesting to you know, how that you got into this. Is there a lot of people in your space, Frank, that are doing what you're doing? I've, that is a great question. Um, I, tr I, I would like to think there is, uh, I know on clubhouse now there are affiliate management rooms. I haven't been in on clubhouse yet. You know, that's, sh you know, shame on me, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, de I definitely think it's a, a land grab right now, but there's a lot of opportunities and conversations that are being had. And again, that comes back to what we were talking about before. It's not something that I know, but I get curious mm -hmm. enough about it that I know if I, once I get in there and understand, okay, doesn't matter what industry you guys are, if it's very similar to what I do, that I know I can easily, you know, sidestep or into another vertical per se. 
So I do believe there are, I just don't know to what percentage of people are, I, I think it's a very small percentage. And then do you have, are most of your, your partners or clients and the people that you're working with, is it through the, the masterminds that you've been connected with, or is it now to a point to where people are just reaching out because they know the man, the myth, the legend, Frank Chen? It's a mix of both. Uh, I think getting out there more, getting your brand out there definitely is, is good for you and gets business that way. Um, yeah. I think reputation is really what allows me to continue through word of mouth to your point. So I think a lot of my business comes to just people knowing what I've done for so many years, people reach out to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I feel very fortunate that I have the ability now to be very selective of who I work with before I was like, yes, yes, because I need the money. I like, yes, yes, yes. But I eventually hit a bottleneck because I was just worn out work, working like 60, 80 hour weeks. And that just was not part of my life and slash business vision, which you know, it's, you know, you know, what's up with that, you know, what's up. And, and you know what though, Frank, I mean, you made a really good comment too. It's the, the ability or the position to be in to choose the business and the people you want to work with, right? When you have that mindset of abundance, it's freeing. Oh my God. And, and, it, and it's hard to, when you're in the grind, thinking about that as you're trying to build the business, but you know, like one of them in my personal practice, I, I've been blessed too. I don't have to work with everybody or anybody and I refuse to right and I've been fortunate to work with those that believe what I believe and it's a very it's a very tight process in fact I'm interviewing the client more than they think they're interviewing me because I don't I don't care if they work with me or not and and I think it's to what your point is is that you know you've arrived too and if you have that mindset of abundance it actually it almost even scales your business just from having that mindset a hundred percent. I was just on the phone with my mentor yesterday and it, it, it's interesting how he sees things versus how I see things. And this is really the importance of if you guys don't have a mentor yet, it's not something you have to always pay for. Um, it's just someone that has accomplished something that you want to accomplish or someone who represents something that you want to represent. I believe there that could be a mentor. Is that safe to say? 100%. Yeah. And you know, I was talking about, I was working with, I worked with this guy, uh, a, a, not a client, but a, a customer of mine for years. And as of late, there was a integrity issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's an integrity issue that I had to deal with. And I was like, man, I had to keep things political because I want to maintain good business with them. And my mentor was like, why? Like, why do you need to do that? Like, why are you working with someone that you don't actually have to? He's like, well, I need to maintain this, this relationship for my client. And he's like, well, you, he does, you don't, you work for yourself, Frank. If this is not jive with the way you want to do business, then don't do it. Mm -hmm. Right. I know I have the luxury. I know a lot of us out there don't have that luxury. Right. right. But what the, the lesson here is if this is not, if you work with people on a regular basis that you just freaking hate working with, then start putting things in place to get yourself out of that and start looking for the clients that you do want to work. Make a list of the non-negotiables of the people you want to work with and the things that are, um, are non-negotiable, that's it. And then and go for you know, And that goes back to, um, Frank and I are in a, in a coaching program together. We're in a different group, but you know, one of the things that, um, what you just said, the non-negotiables. Yeah. Right. I mean, I've had coaches for years, but what's really helped me is when I'm looking at my, my vision and the things that I want to do, the non-negotiable part has been really, really eye-opening. Like, no, I don't want to do that. And it, it even comes back to your point too, of having to deal with certain phone calls or having, I mean, the last thing I want is to look at my phone at four o'clock and say, Oh, I gotta make, I gotta, I gotta deal with this person. Exactly. I don't want to ruin my day that way. Right. Exactly. And the people that I work with, I'm like, Oh yeah, I get to talk to my friend, you know, and granted it's business and we're serious, but it's, it's working with people that, that you have a, a, a common belief and just a respect for and have integrity. Right. And I think that that's so huge because when we're starting our businesses, man, we're just like what you fog in a mirror, right? We're trying right. to work with anybody and everybody and trying to be a chameleon to who we are so we can, you know, please all the people that were different personalities. I've gotten to the point now, it's just, this is who I am and this is, this is what I believe. And if it's a good fit, it's a good fit. If not, it's not. And it's okay. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It's just, we're not a good fit to work together. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm going to be tr completely transparent with your audience, John. Okay. And I, I think this is a, a I, I can't take any credit for this. A, a very close friend of mine here in Houston, um, he's a real estate investor. I turned him on to another product here. Uh, now he's doing land, but for, you know, and now he's doing incredibly well in the land space. 
But before I was able to get him there, before he was able to get there, he had to make a huge commitment to himself where he invested. Uh, he actually maxed out one of his, he had a, a brand new baby born. Uh, we were really close friends. And he was like, don't, don't tell my wife I'm doing this. I'm like, <laughs> don't tell me that because <laughs> our wives are friends. But he maxed out a credit card and invested in a coaching program. But he had so much skin. I know this guy. And I know he wasn't one of those guys who just buy something, leaves it on the yeah. shelf. And he committed. And through that lesson, I was like, he burned every possible break. Like he went all in, like literally went all in for this dream and he made it work. And I came to that crossroad about two years ago when I joined this mastermind. I was like, man, I've never invested in these kind of things before. I don't know how I want to do this. So I went all in and it was literally the best decision I made ever since I've been doing that more and more. It's just been paying dividends and dividends and dividends over and over again. Uh, I think what I want you guys to know here is I'm about to take a... a from, la from last November, 2020, if I kept those clients going into 2021, I would have had my first half a million dollar a year, okay? In terms of like, this is money in my pocket, guys, half a million dollars in my pocket. I, I am launching a new business, which is the Affiliate Incubator, which I've been working on for four months. And I'm going to, I'm essentially taking a, what a three, four, $400,000 pay cut in order to pursue this dream. I wanna ask you guys out who are listening, who is willing to take a $400,000 pay cut to pursue something, to follow the dreams, to work with their ideal client, to do exactly and wake up and do everything, do what they want every day until whatever that end number is. Right. Like, ask yourself. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would have never been able to make that kind of crazy move without people around me who did and showed me like, yo, you you got to believe in yourself. Right. You know what I mean? Like you, you have to, otherwise you're just going to continue to work for other people's dreams and they're going to have nicer cars and nicer houses while you continue to work your asses off for them. I, I'm not about that. I, I'm just not about that. I mean, and, and think about that decision, right? Cause you've been grinding and grinding to get to the point to where you're, you know, you're bringing in half a million dollars and all of a sudden you're like, okay, I'm going to just take a $400,000. Pay <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't start over, but Again, it, it comes back down to your vision and to the things that we've been learning in our, in our coaching programs and things that we're doing, the non-negotiables. And really, um, man, I, I applaud you for that, Frank, because I know, I know you're going to kill it. Um, I was you know. freaking out in January, brother. I was freaking out in January. Hey, you know, taxes, you're, you're done paying taxes, all the, all the money you got sitting around like, okay, now what? You know, now I got a, now I got a, a goal to hit. You know, the number from last year is the number I got to hit this year. That's kind of how I operate. I got always make more than the previous year. I don't care where I start. That's the goal. Uh, but the mentor gave me advice again, Frank, you're not going to struggle with doing getting business. You are good at what you do. And it's that right. fear mentality. I didn't have that belief system in myself. And guys, I've been doing this for 12 years. I make good money and I still struggle with belief. I still struggle with that confidence. It, it's a different type, right? It's a different type of struggle, but I'm getting advice from people who are at a seven figure level. They think differently. You don't know what you don't know, right. but by following them, not blindly, but just through trust, mm -hmm. I'm in a place now. What is it? April, March, April, about to launch the product. Already got people paying me for this already. It's like, oh, I'm back to normal again. I'm feeling great again, right? And I wouldn't have that security without someone there supporting me and like giving me that encouragement. Well, you, you know, too, and, and Frank, it's like we're so hard on ourselves. Oh, you yeah. know, I, I had a really good um, friend of mine in the podcast um, who does a lot of coaching. And just the crap and the stories, and he always, he talks about stories, the stories that we tell ourselves, right? And the, why can't I do this? I shouldn't do this, all these things and of what we tell ourselves. And so if we have people that can help come along with us and say, Hey, you got to quit thinking that way. And it's, it's, it's hard to engage in that because your mind just does crazy things, you know? And, and, it, and it's, and it's, just, I think it's really important. Um, I've learned a lot throughout my life in running business. And just really, and, and I'm not great at it by any means, because I, I have negative self-talk a lot, but, yeah. you know, just to be vulnerable and honest, but, you know, at the end of the day, you got to reframe and retrain your mind and start talking, you know, with, with power, because words are powerful, right? Perhaps. And, and the things that we say and the way that we can communicate um, really has an impact on our outcomes. Absolutely. And I think you hit a, I think such an important thing is words. Like words are such a powerful, motivating, subconscious thing. And this is something that I work on with my wife all the time. We try to eliminate the word I can't. And said, instead we'll say, we'll try to figure it out. Like everything that we try to do, we can figure out. Guys, we're, there is not a 
ounce of information that we can't find on the internet these days, right? Yeah. So um, it's, it, it, regardless of where you are in your life, if you're working three jobs, you're working two jobs, you're, you're living paycheck to paycheck, you know, you're living super comfortably. It doesn't matter where you are. I think um, as long as we're striving to be better, whether it's physically, emotionally, or financially, it's always about self-improvement and being and holding yourself accountable. I think, I think I see too many people and even in my, in my immediate friends group and they, you know, I don't forgot who said it. It's like the five closest people in your group. I, if I knew who they were, I could tell exactly who you are as a person. Right. Mm -hmm. um, within my own social circle, you know, I have people who give excuses all the time. I see so much potential in them. Right. I'm in the coaching business. I see a lot of, and it's just crazy how their own limiting beliefs literally stop them from greatness. Yeah. It's it just, it breaks my heart because I always want to like lift all of the people around me into just, I always joke around my friends like, dude, let's, you know, we're going to take like a month long vacation. We're going to have mansions. We're going to have cars or, you know, our kids are going to be playing together. Like we're all going to have all these amazing things. I don't speak from a perspective. I want these things. And you guys come to my house and we do all these, you know, we're all in the same neighborhood. We're all successful on crazy businesses. That's all I ever talk about with my friends is how do we lift each other up in our businesses and our lives? Mm -hmm. So and maybe there's a lesson there. It's like, I hope you guys can, you know, just surround yourself with more positive people and people who are really encouraging and, and don't really feed into your limiting beliefs. That's a great comment. That's a great point, right? You don't need a whole bunch of yes men, guys. That That is the last, you, I love people who are just like, Frank, that's wrong. Like, oh, that's a wrong way of thinking. Just ask my wife. I love that she tells me I'm wrong how I think all the time. I'm a yeah. very stubborn person. And my growth has come from people tearing down those barriers of, admitting that I'm stubborn and, you know, admitting that I am an asshole sometimes so I <laughs> say that, you know, but it's like, and I'm a terrible husband sometimes, but it allows me to become a better husband and, and a better friend. And a, I think just getting really raw with yourself allows you to really yeah. grow like, like just crazy amounts. And having those relationships and that's challenging. I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking about my wife. I'm like, you know, she, she breaks me down all the time, <laughs> you know? It's called it's humbling. Humbling. I, I hate it, right? And I know she's wrong, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'll tell you that she's wrong. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, no. yeah John, she's wrong. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, she, you know, but it's just people in our lives like that, to your point, like if you have, you know, really core, real true relationships to where people challenge you. Yeah. That's important, right? And you made a comment too, and I know that we were talking about this in um, one of our leadership courses, but trying to shed the people that are either, you know, enabling you or speaking into your self negative talk or just the environment that you're around and the non-negotiables and trying to cut those out. I mean, I've been fortunate and blessed to have a great group of friends and, and, you know, haven't really had to shed those relationships. But if, you know, from, from just thinking about that, when we were in our leadership boardroom conversations of just the real, cause there were some people that ha were having to do that right and it's a challenge but it, they're going to prosper so much more by getting the negativity out of their life and it's just you know running a business run in life in general right you have to always surround yourself with people that are going to lift you up hold you accountable speak into you and you have to be in my opinion you have to be coachable right it, it, one thing that blows me away is that how many entrepreneurs are out there and business owners that are out there that don't have a coach or a mentor you know and i went last year without that and man i was like when, when I went to the, the, um, the, the, the speaking thing with Sean, right. It yeah. was just, like, it was, it was one of those things where it, it was just, I did not think that's where he was going to go at the whole weekend. Yeah. I was there for the speaking part of it. Right. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was just perfect timing because I'm like, you know what, for the, it was like in the last 20 years, it was like one year where I didn't have a coach. And once you'd be surprised that the one year was just challenging and just full of bullshit, I didn't want to deal with. Right. And why is that? You know, it's because I didn't have someone pushing me, uh, challenging me and making me aware of my, what I call the blind spots, you know? So that, that blind spot term is so accurate, man. And I always say, you don't know what you don't know. And I'll tell you this, it's okay that you don't know what you don't know, right. but are you actually okay with not knowing? I know that's a weird way to say it. It's like, it's okay not to know, but are you okay with not knowing? You know, and I'll phrase it a different way, right? And in, in the language that I use, and I think I even said this to you the other day, but it was like, um, if what you thought, if what you thought turned out not to be true, when would you want to know about it? hundred percent. Right. And right. some people will just stick their heads in the sand and just say, I just don't want anyone to be aware of it, but we have to take the blinders off. And if, again, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Right. But there's also things 
that we know that we do know. And then there's the things that we don't know that we don't really even know that we don't know. And that's it. And that's the layers of growth and business and personal development that I think a lot of people, uh, when they start seeking these things are trying to do is like they peel back one layer and they're thinking I'm healed, I'm ready to go. And they realize, Oh shoot, there's more things I don't know. Um, but I'm, I'm in a good place now. I, I've gotten better and they don't, they just stop growing. So guys, this is a never ending process. I hang out with people in their sixties, their seventies, freaking, I was in the thing with Ron Legrand, who's the godfather of real estate. And he was at a mastermind I was at. And I was like, this guy's still like doing education. It's insane. Like yeah. if he's still doing it, well, who am I to stop? You know, this guy runs like a, like a eight figure business. Who am I to stop? So I think that that's, I think that's what excites me. And I, and people are like, Oh, Frank, you know, what's your end goal? Like how much money do you want to make? What does your business need to do? And I don't ever think I make decisions on how much money I want to make. It's how happy and where am I in my life right now? Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things I think, you know, I don't know how, how much time we have left, but I just want to say it's like, I think my theme for my life is compressing time. Too many people that I talk to them like, oh, I'm going to retire in 20 years. I'm going to retire at 65. I'm going to wait till my, whoever I talk to, they either have some outlandish retirement goals. Like, oh, I want to make a million dollars in like three months. I'm like, no one ever has a plan. But the bottom line is, is everything that you want can be, you can get it in a much shorter period of time. It, the question is how much are you willing to sacrifice and how much are you willing to work for it? Mm-hmm. Right. If you really want to tire, you want to be on the beach every day, you want to travel six months of every year and work remotely and have that, you know, beach bum laptop lifestyle, or you want to do the van life, which I think is super cool now, or all that stuff. What are you willing to get it? Right. You can get it this year if you want. I am a hundred percent believer of that. I believe if I hustle and do what I want, I believe I could do over a million this year. I, I strongly believe that. Mm-hmm. But I'm not at the point where I can, I'm about to have a baby. I got to be present. I want to be a father first. I'm no longer in that younger years, grind, 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 grind. I can be smarter about it now. Right. But um, I just truly believe people really short sell themselves and really waste a lot of the time. And that just, I just, that breaks my heart, man. Yeah. Well, dude, I mean, I just look at the time, like we've always been going for an hour. So we probably have to show up, but tell, tell the listeners to where they can get in contact with you because um, Frank, I mean, you know, you are uber talented in what you do. Um, just the respect that you have in, in the, the circles that we run in, um, man, I know you provide a ton of value for your people that you partner with and work with. So why don't you let the listeners know how they can get a hold of you, reach out to you, because um, there is probably a lot of opportunity that people aren't even aware of in that affiliation space, just with normal day-to-day life, probably. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Right. Yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate you giving me that platform. So uh, to find out more information about the Affiliate Incubator, it's just theaffiliateincubator.com. You can schedule a call with me, um, get more information about what it is that we do. Um, But bottom line is if you're out there and you're interested in just selling online products, or maybe you're in an industry where you already are doing this, uh, the Affiliate Incubator is a great opportunity to really expand your brand, um, create more awareness, and really... um, most importantly, just make more money every year. That's what we do. Uh, but we really do leave with really creating value for your customer base. We don't really get in bed with anybody who just sells smoke and shadows, right? We, we really need to know that your product does help people. Then we'll get behind that. That's really the most important thing. We look for longevity and uh, there's no longevity with products that don't really do what they say they're going to do. So right. that's uh, the integrity standpoint. But again, thank you so much, John. This is a blast, man. Uh, thanks for allowing me to talk about just life and business and just personal development, man. Yeah, man. I really appreciate having on. And I'm going to see you like in two weeks. Well, yes, sir. Another, Not even two weeks. At a mastermind. <laughs> right? yep. so I'm looking forward to having dinner and uh, yeah, man. hanging out. So thank again, you, brother. Yeah, man. Thanks again, Frank, for being on. And I really appreciate it. All right, guys. Take care.